You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So let's say that you're the management of a little company started here in Kirkland, Kirkland Products, called Costco. And you're coming up on holiday season, and there's been a little bit of a glitch in the supply chain throughout the world. It's causing some delays and causing some increase in shipping costs mainly some really big increases in shipping costs. What do you do? What do you do knowing that holidays are coming up and you need to get those goods into the hands of consumers all around the world? I mean, just no matter where you are, people need their Costco stuff, right? Here's what you do. Costco was renting three container ships and several thousand containers to shield itself from supply chain delays and rising costs. It's kind of like Gordon Gecko and the movie Wall Street saying, we're going to self-insure. If you don't like it, we're going to self-insure. Take that. Hey, if, you don't, if you're not going to ship the stuff in time, we're going to do it ourselves. That's what they're doing. It's what we're talking about here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Why are we talking about shipping containers and Costco and container ships? Those are different than shipping containers. Why are we talking about that on a real estate podcast? Well, People got to have their, their, their toys and stuff at Christmas, right? It's important. It's important to everybody. It's what we're doing. All right. Let's get into it. Before we do, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies and I read the news. Why wouldn't we? Why wouldn't we do this? Let's go. Okay. So Costco, and, and, and you've been hearing about these shipping stories and you probably haven't paid much attention. Some of you have. Because I, some of you guys send me the stories, but vast majority of people are like, whatever. We just, where's all the toilet paper? Where, where's all the bottled water? Why, why is that? Why is there a shortage here? What, what's going on? People get really annoyed, and they're like, ah, supply chain, and then they move on. And they're like, ah, sure, hope they fix that. But nobody really kind of looks into it. I mean, there's been some crazy stories about how many ships there have been off uh, Los Angeles and Long Beach, California, and now in China, we've got literally hundreds of ships backed up off the ports in China. Down in California, they've got ships just kind of meandering back and forth off the coast. Just ah, need you guys to be in a holding pattern for like a week ish. Just kind of go back and forth and, you know, just hang tight. We'll be with you in a little bit. We're, we're having some troubles. Don't have enough truck drivers or people to run all the cranes to grab the containers off the ships. And put them on in, in, on shore and then ship them out. We just don't have enough guys to, or gals to do all that. So supply chain, right? Costco has joined Home Depot in renting its own container ships to prevent delays and keep costs down as the global shipping crisis rages on. And the more and more I read about this, the more and more I kind of think this is a, this is a money squeeze. A big money squeeze. In a call with analysts Thursday, Costco CFO Richard Galanti said the company had chartered three ships to import products from Asia to the US and Canada. This would help Costco avoid spending six times the normal price on shipping or containers through a third party, he said. Each ship could carry between 800 and 1,000 containers at a time, he said. The company had also leased several thousand containers for use on these ships, he said. So I I have folks that that work with me that deal with shipping stuff through Amazon. And uh, the cost of like a a 40-foot shipping container has gone from Oh, like twenty five hundred bucks to two to, to twenty like twenty thousand dollars, and at an absolute peak rate, maybe like twenty five grand for a forty foot shipping container. Just insane, uh, you know, increases in, in price. Costco expected to make about ten deliveries over the next year using these ships, accounting for about twenty percent of its imports from Asia. He said. We're gonna. We're just gonna take over our own shipping. That's literally what they're doing. The big box chain is among a large group of retailers grappling with an over ongoing supply chain crisis that's causing delays and shortages. Failing demand in the first half of 2020 with the COVID COVID shutdowns, followed by a surge at the back end of the year, 
has led to delays, port traffic jams, and blockages. A lack of containers and dock workers has made the situation worse. So we've just got like this perfect storm of circumstances where you just can't get enough stuff from China to here. That's the bottom line, right? So as I discussed on last quarter's call, inflationary factors abound, Galanti said. Higher labor costs, higher freight costs, higher transportation demand, along with container shortages and port delays. It's a lot of fun right now. And that's what you just keep hearing. I mean, you'll go into Costco, and I just did a podcast on toilet paper, water, a bunch of other things that they that Costco is doing a limit per customer, hey, you can come in, but you can only get three of the 48 roll Costco packs of toilet paper, because you need to have 130 whatever units of toilet paper on hand for your family. I mean, just in case something really went sideways with the toilet paper supply in the world. You got to have enough on hand because the things really get out of control if, oh, if, if you don't have enough toilet paper. Costco's standard rollout time for new products in its stores has doubled in some cases, he said, adding that furniture, toys, computers, video games, and appliances had the biggest delays. They just can't get them here fast enough or inexpensively enough for Costco to sell us at said prices. All right, so that's what Costco's doing. They're renting ships, they're renting shipping containers, and they're doing it themselves. Let's let's back up and kind of look at a little bit more of what's actually going on in some of these ports to create a situation where Costco is doing this. Container ships now piling up at anchorages off China's ports. More signs that the Trans-Pacific liner capacity has overwhelmed port capacity. We just can't get the stuff in in a timely manner. And now it's becoming really expensive. There are over 60 container ships full of import cargo stuck offshore of Los Angeles and Long Beach in California. But there are more than double that, 154 as of Friday, waiting to load export cargo off of Shanghai and Ningbo in China. 154 ships containing shipping containers, just cargo ships, 154 of them just hanging out out there. Yep, you guys are in a, in a pretty long line. It's, it might be a little while. You might as well just relax and hang out on the ship and enjoy whatever it is that you do on a container ship that isn't really doing anything. Do you do some maintenance? Do you change the oil? No, you need to be in port for that. You need to be in port for any of that stuff. So yeah, what do you do if you're a guy on the ship and you're just like, oh, I can see shore, but man, we, we can't go in there. We, it's going to be a long time. That would be boring. But you're getting paid and you're probably getting paid triple pay whatever it is, because we all know there's not enough workers to make all this go around. The number of container ships anchored off of Shanghai and Nimbo has surged over recent weeks. There are now 242 container ships waiting for berths countrywide. 242 countrywide. That's a lot of ships out there with a lot of stuff doing a lot of nothing. Ah, just hang tight. Just float. Hope you can put your anchor down. Whether it's due to heavy export volumes, Typhoon Chantu, or did I pronounce that right? I have no idea. Or COVID, rising congestion in China is yet another wild card for the Trans-Pacific. Volatile trade flows. Congestion in Chinese ports that slows the flow of exports is bad news for U.S. importers, but it could temporarily alleviate pressure on the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach. It just means it's going to get delayed. Right? I mean, if you're not sending out a bunch of stuff from China and it's coming here, all right, it gives LA and Long Beach chance to catch up. But then you're just going to whack them again with another onslaught of ships. Not good. Ships follow the money. This is the interesting section of this article. A major driver of congestion on both sides of the Pacific Ocean, land side capacity, which is the terminals, the trucking, the, the trains, the rails, the warehousing is limited. But the vessel capacity of a single ocean trade lane is highly 
flexible. And I've had some of you send me these stories, like your opinions on what's going on. While the number of ships in the world is finite, operators can shift ships to wherever they make the most money. And the Trans-Pacific is now a particularly lucrative trade. Spot rates include premiums can top $20,000 per 40 foot equivalent unit. So that's the 40 foot shipping container I was talking about earlier. That's up from like 2500 or five grand. It just made this this continuous march up. And now we're at like 20 grand. And I've seen the actual quotes for some of this this stuff through like Amazon resellers, or people with Amazon stores, and you're like, wow, that 20 grand a shipping container up from that number. Those are some significant increases. So these assets, the ships, they are super mobile, said Sandbull. What's happening now is the opposite of what dogged the industry for the past 20 years. Five years ago, people were asking, how can the trans Pacific rate drop from two grand to 1500 in the space of just six days? It was because you could take a vessel from one place sail at someplace else. And suddenly there were more ships and a price war and rates dropped. So now we're seeing the opposite, he said, as ship operators pile more capacity into the Trans Pacific, congestion rises, delays mount, the incentive for shippers to pay premiums is supported. And all in rates remain at record highs, because everything is jammed up. They, they just they can't get to everything. And so it's causing these incredible backups. And that's what leads Costco and Home Depot to just basically do their own thing. All right, we're not going to rely upon these shipping companies anymore. We're just going to put into service our own. We're just going to handle it on our own. They must have the uh, do they have the contacts to make it go in the ports? I mean, how does that all work? I would have no idea. All right. So that's that. Thousands of shipping containers are stuck off the coast of California as the ports operate below capacity, combating a crushing shortage of workers, equipment, and time. The hours on the uh, ports, those have been kind of wiki whack. I've heard some are going 24 hours, others are cut back because they just don't have the personnel capacity. The largest port in the US faces a near record backlog of cargo ships, and there's no end in sight. Los Angeles and Long Beach ports had 62 cargo ships waiting to dock and unload as of Friday, a stark contrast to an average of one or zero ships before the pandemic. Today, ships at the port can wait for as long as three weeks, Port LA data shows. Despite the historic backup, the ports are only operating at 60 to 70% capacity. They're not operating 100% capacity. Um, that's a huge operational disadvantage. Uh, there are two ports that are closed for several hours most days, as well as on Sundays, making it more difficult to keep pace with the ports in Asia and Europe that are sending the goods on a 24 seven schedule. But the ports here in the US don't have the manpower to make it go just don't have enough people. Last week, the port of Long Beach moved to increase their hours of operation to 24 hours on Monday through Thursday. The Port of Los Angeles did not follow suit. Instead, choosing instead to maintain its existing hours. The traditional routine at the ports includes two shifts for longshore workers, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. to 3 a.m. The ports are closed on Sundays. Overnight shifts and Saturdays are more expensive and rarely used, the journal reported. So you've just got this crazy scenario. And our next section here is longer hours may not be enough. Gene Soroka, executive director of Port Lots, Los Angeles, said longer hours do little to address the backlog when truckers and warehouse operators have not similarly extended their hours. So you can haul a whole bunch of stuff in. But if the people who you're dependent upon to get the stuff offloaded, if they're not doing the same thing, now oh, you're host, we're here. Well, we wish we had some people to help you out. But sorry, Charlie, go back later. Don't come back on Sunday. We're closed. So it's not optimal for truckers to pick up loads at night, especially when they'd have to find alternative places to store the goods when the warehouses are not open at night. What's more, many warehouses near the West Coast don't have space for the goods. 
About 98% of warehouses in Southern California's logistics heavy Inland Empire region are fully occupied, while the entire Western US has a 3.6 vacancy rate, according to the journal. So there's nowhere to even put this stuff. It's this, it's this massive whiplash, isn't it? All right. Yeah, we're shutting her down. It's going to shut down the economy. What could possibly go wrong here? Let's close it all down. Yep. Yep. Close it all down. Got to be safe. Close her all down. We did that. And then as soon as we did that, people are at home going, you know, my deck's a little rotten. I need to do my deck. And you might think, well, that's just wood. But it's the nails. It's the nail guns. It's the hammers. It's all this stuff. It's so much of it. House remodel. Oh, if I have to hunker down in this house any longer, I'm going to do a remodel. All that stuff, all that stuff that you need. Hey, if I'm working from home and I need a new computer, if I'm going to be working from home, I, I need a faster computer. I need a gaming chair. If I'm going to be working, if I'm going to be playing video games all day long because I'm stuck at home and I'm supposed to be working, I need a gaming chair to sit in to do my work. I mean, play games. You know what I mean? I mean, this just goes on and on and on. Every asset, every aspect of society, just we became this massive consumer society because we're like, I need some stuff. I need Amazon to, dr to drop me off some stuff. Not tomorrow, not two days from now, today. I need prime same day delivery. That's how I judge, you know, if I'm getting good service. How they get that stuff to us, I mean, it's just phenomenal. You'll order something and you'll be like, well, if you order it in the next, um, you know, two hours and 63 minutes or, or 57 minutes and 63 minutes doesn't count. That's an hour and three minutes and 27 seconds. You can have it this afternoon at 5.04 p.m. I mean, it's just, it's amazing to me that you hit that little button and, ah, hey, drop it off on the front porch. Well, we've gotten so used to that, that we've just got, that, that we had all this stuff that all of a sudden we started buying and yet we were shut down. And so this massive whiplash of demand came through and we're still dealing with it. We're still dealing with it. I keep forgetting to try and figure out in 2015, there was also something that really rocked the supply chain. And I can't remember what that was. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments. Um, but it took like a year to, you know, work out the kinks of the supply chain. It, it took like a year. So this little thing that we're in now supply chain fiasco, whatever it is, crisis, Armageddon, um, this little crisis, I mean, we're talking could take through, you know, most of 2022 is what I've read some some projections on I, I can't see that. But then again, I don't really know much about the whole supply chain and shipping and, and all that good stuff. I just read the news. But um, I've got a little bit of a handle on it. But you know, this is going to be impacting supply chain for months and months and months down the road. You don't just, you know, all these ships sitting around the world with goods in them, with capacities full and warehouses. Where are you going to put all the stuff? Don't have enough workers to get it there. I mean, it's just a cluster, right? It's a cluster. And then we get to Costco and we're like, where's the damn toilet paper? Man, there's a big pallets that were there. Just all the little plastic wrapping of the pallets left. You get all worked up. Well, now you know. It's a bunch of factors, isn't it? And the primary cause is cost. I mean, it's just becoming almost cost prohibitive in some instances to send stuff over. But if you need to ship it, you need to ship it and away you go. So that's where we're at. Just some crazy impacts on the economy in general because of our favorite thing to blame, supply chain. Forgot that milk at the store? They didn't have any? Supply chain. Couldn't get it. Not there. Now, that's nonsense because um, I haven't seen that. But um, what do you think about maybe this Christmas? Some toys running out, some consumer goods running out, not getting enough. Yeah, that's definitely going to be a thing, right? I mean, just no way around that. And um, 
you know, so many things have to be ordered months out in advance in order for it to get from China to the stores, all that good stuff. And when you've got these little tiny bumps in the road or bumps in the sea, as it were. Yeah, it's wild, right? So yeah, I think this is my maybe my third podcast on the whole supply chain and the whole shipping container things. To me, it's a fascinating deal. A lot of it comes down to follow the money as in anything else in the world. It's about the money. Show me the money. It was a great scene. All right, that's it for me on this one. Thanks so much for tuning into the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. As this unfolds and as Costco takes on more ships, more container, shipping containers, I'll report right back here in the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. Thanks again for joining. I'll catch up with you soon. Till then, stay safe, make good decisions. We'll talk again. Bye. to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.